top of the evening to you ladies and gentlemen boys and girls today we're going to talk about the latest and greatest from max flow we have the pre-production version air cleaner cover for the 500i we have a couple different 500i's here at the moment um not sure exactly where to start maybe in the beginning I called Joseph well I've called him many times over the years but I called him in probably March of 2020 after I received my buddy Dave's 500i from Ireland and we kind of had a conversation we being Joseph and myself about if there was any saw out there that needed one of his covers it would be the 500i based on what I was seeing with the stock version um we'll get into a little bit of a comparison thing we'll talk a little bit about the history first and so had a few phone calls back and forth in the spring of 2020. I met up with him in person in the third week of June 2020. Showed him the 500i in person. Actually was able to shake his hand for the first time. So that was kind of sweet. Um, and I don't know. We kind of hatched a plan, I guess. Mostly him. I'm just kind of going along for the ride. But I was really kind of pressuring if you can call it pressuring I was really recommending I was really hopeful that he would make a air cleaner cover since he already had the assembly that does the filtration part of the equation in production for many many years and then Subsequently, after that first meeting, we had some more conversations. It took several months before he came up with the Gen 1. This is one of just a few of the original covers uh, that he ended up letting me do some testing with. Uh, I did some filming back in January when I was helping Cousin Gary. If you've watched any of those videos from last January, I had that air cleaner cover for uh, a few months before that, I think, testing it around the house and then took it out into the quote-unquote wilds and ran it on a 500i that I was using here and there helping Cousin Gary out last winter few more versions later I think this is the gen 4 version on this particular saw I don't remember he sent me that one to test out in I think it was March of 2021 it could have been April it's hard to tell now so quite a few changes between the gen 1 prototype cover and the gen 4 prototype cover most notably uh, it, it was i'm thinking that you can see this part right here how it's got has some curvature this part is more flat one of the things that i don't ever do really is run um half wrap version saws out on the west coast you're having to come at trees from both sides and so that's because the ground is steep generally so you need a wrap handlebar out on the west coast basically and what he found with the half wrap version saw that he was using in some of this process for fitting is that the original cover with the bulbous effect on both sides the cover would actually make contact with the ground because the saw is very slim in half wrap form the clutch cover doesn't stick out much and so he had to go back and do some redesigning and came up with uh, the, the shape that's a little more flat on the drive side PTO side but he still left the bulbous style shape out on the 
flywheel side. And if you look at the pre-production version, we see essentially it has the same shape, although this is one. I, I actually made a trip over there, checked out his new digs. We kind of hung out for, oh, I don't know, three or four hours the other day. And um, it's kind of just, I don't know, checking it out, talking about stuff talking about life, <laughs> talked about covers, saws, all kinds of stuff. Um, I got a segue off, though. Um, he has a jet ski in his collection. World's fastest jet ski was his. He owned it. He built it. And it was a 10-year record. So the guy is definitely knowing his way around two-cycle engines and definitely uh, watercraft, if you will, at least the jet ski version watercraft. So I thought I'd segue on to that um, a little bit because it was kind of cool. He took me and my NBFF, Mr. Ryder, into his little shed and showed me, showed us the, the jet ski. So I, I was actually pretty impressed because I did not know that. Um, so back on track, we have the, essentially this is the for sale version. And before I forget, you're able to go on the website. He's going to be taking um, orders. They're going to be pre-production orders at this point. Maxflowfilters.com. I'm not sure if you can actually see that in that cover. I'm thinking that you can right below the MaxFlow, MaxFlowFilters.com. You can go on the website and pre-order so that when he gets the new collection of covers, if you will, for the 500i in, then he can begin sending them to the people that do the pre-ordering. I just thought I'd throw that out there before I forget. Um, so if we want to go back on the concept, because we kind of segued off on a couple things, um, maybe we should take a look at the difference in how things work. This is a stock cover and stock HD2 setup. It's placed somewhat like this, so the air has to come around on the sides. There's a little bit of a straight shot coming underneath. Not on this side, though. Not on the flywheel side. Only the PTO side. And on this side, it has to come around. Um, up above, it can come straight down. So it's a little restricted because of the box, essentially, that it's inside of. And I would imagine that's a wet weather thing to a degree, but I'm not really positive. If we want to take a look at the Max Flow version, it's much more open um, around the sides. There's actually a hole in the cage if we want to take a look at one of those essentially this is what's inside the filter one of the reasons why you get so much more airflow with these is because there's much more capacity for air movement in the cage itself and so you can see there's holes that line up with the louvers it's pretty much open on the top open on the bottom it's much less restricted if you're working in a burn this is the only filter you're going to want to run lest you burn up your saw sending all that fine particulate dust through because these are a known quantity to let particulates pass that's one of the reasons why i called him dave had used his saw for about two weeks and when i and i think i actually showed a video where i was playing around with his saw and the actuation and I was unimpressed with the amount of tension on the nut with the stock system and Joseph made several revisions in the process the early version covers didn't have the rings in there like this one does which adds a lot of tension which is super nice we'll check out um, how the actuation works on a saw I had fitted a 660 cover on a saw just because I was dinking around testing some stuff out and he's done a great job with getting the little tangs to line up with 
the recesses in the saw itself so you got to make sure you're watching that when you put this thing together um, I'm still kind of getting it handled myself on a personal level but you can hear the actuation it's much more positive the cover doesn't move around it's just a really cool setup much more sturdy than some of the other ones even like on maybe like a 460 or something like that if we take a look at the stock setup same kind of a concept you can hear it clicking but it doesn't have the same amount of tension um, and they're a known quantity to actually kind of be a problem so through the process, the first gen sooner, or excuse me, air cleaner cover actually came with some little doohickeys in here, little cross looking, there's four cross looking risers in here that land on the back of this air cleaner that basically put tension on it. And I kind of immediately expressed my concern about that because you're out in the woods and things get bonked and limbs come down and you're in brush and you're just, the cover was going to be moving or working a little bit and I just felt on a personal level that it was going to be a problem with tearing the actual element and so I don't remember which version of the so here's the fourth gen. We can see that it has the little tension rings in there, which is pretty sweet. It was probably this the second or maybe the third generation um, cover. He changed the concept. Now, the fourth generation has a pretty decently positive actuation, but it's not like this pre-production one that I'm actually monkeying around with now um, it's definitely more positive once you get everything locked in there it's sweet fit and finish is standard max flow expectations that a guy has grown used to at this point um, fits really nicely and this is the type of plastic that's impervious to a lot of uh, solvents and gas and crap. So that's kind of nice. Now one of the things that we want to talk about a little bit here, I guess, is we're kind of getting toward the end of the process for me anyway. It's been a long time in the making. We're a year and a half later at this point um, since that first phone call. And one of the things that Joseph was up against just like everybody else on the planet for the last year and a half is the COVID catastrophe has caused a lot of supply line, supply chain issues where product is available and then product is not available. Um, the end user, uh, you make the phone call and yeah, we got all kinds of the raw materials and then a week or two later, yeah, no, we don't have all the raw materials anymore. Like somebody came in and gobbled stuff up. And so I think as per normal and per usual or whatever with the Internet monkey business, there's some yammering going on about how um, max flow isn't up to snuff or whatever. But actually, that's not even close to accurate. So... He's actually been ahead of the curve in the process. On his end, he had issues with the COVID crap. I mean, it's just caused him all kinds of delays, literally delays, 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 delays. We're probably a year later, well, getting close to a year later than where a normal, in a normal 
type of uh, situation worldwide where this cover would have been available a long, long time ago, about a year ago at this point. Um, if not a couple months ahead from right now, after about eight months or so, at least within a year's time from when he started the process, he would have been able to get something on the market. So that's kind of the reality of it. It's been in the works for about a year and a half. Their pre-production, he has a few. He doesn't have a wad of them at this point because, oh yeah, supply chain issues, supply line issues, however you want to call it. Um, it's not that he hasn't been diligent on his end. It's been stymied by what's happening on a worldwide level. So for those of you out there that are, I don't know, spreading misinformation. I feel sorry for that whole concept. Um, it's it's just, like, Joseph's just a heck of a nice guy. He's just a nice guy. I really like him as a human being. Um, and he's been working diligently. He's just been hamstrung by the way the world has been due to this COVID monkey business that we've been everybody's been affected by it in some way and so keep that in mind when you know you're I don't know if you don't own steel it's not going to be something that you're going to want to purchase anyway but if you do own that keep in mind if a guy has a 500i or maybe a couple of them and he wants one of these covers and you do decide to go forward with it it's a much better system for sealing. They're using a, essentially, we're seeing how we have indentations where the lines are causing the seal surface, but this is actually an oiled element, so it filters out very, very fine, very, very fine particulates. This is a 60 micron pore size. I don't actually have any of the white ones. I didn't actually get any of those with these covers. He gave me four of them out of the goodness of his heart. I was super thankful for that. Um, but I just ended up with the green element. But it, when you go to buy these, you'll get a green and a white. And the white is actually 80 microns. So it does a smaller pore size in that filter element itself. Um, we're going to have to get into how to install these properly. I've had some saws come into my shop where um, they weren't actually installed correctly and stuff was getting by them. So it's like with anything, if you don't do it right, it's not going to work correctly. I just thought I'd kind of throw that out there. But anyway, kind of back on track. Joseph's heck of a nice guy. He's been working diligently. So... Um, keep that in mind when you're yammering on about nothing because basically those people that have been saying stuff about him dropping the ball or whatever that might look like, I haven't actually seen any of it. I just kind of heard about it a little bit. Um, you should be ashamed of yourself, actually, because you're not even close to accurate. Um, this has been going on for a long time. Again, we're looking at right here, this is basically the sixth generation concept but this is going to be and this isn't even the last one he's going to change it one more time one minor tweak of something uh from a visual aspect i guess that he wanted to do just because he like uh, he likes the look of the concept that's why we're dealing with the pre-production at the moment um so yeah it's been in the works for a long 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 time it's just the way that it works sometime when you're doing production stuff. You think about saws. I'll segue off for a second. I had a chance to run the 385s when no one knew what they were in about 2000 or something. That Maybe it was 2001. I don't even remember now. Could have been 2002. I think it was 2001. No, maybe it was 2000 and yeah, I don't remember now exactly. But anyway, so had a chance to check those saws and it was two or three years before they hit the market. And then we look at the 
basically the 572. The first time I ever touched one of the prototype saws was in 2012, and that saw never came on the market in this country until I think it was 2019. So sometimes even on a factory level, things take a long, long time, and yet we're looking at pretty much the end product for the 500i filter cover, rain cover they call it technically, and we're only a year and a half out at this point, so like super cool. And had things not been the way they are currently, it probably would have been, I don't know, six or eight months maybe possibly before this cover would have been available. So anyway, kind of yammering on about the process. Hopefully, um, if you're running one of these and you want a better filtration system, my suggestion is go on maxflowfilters.com, get yourself a pre-order situation handled, because when he does get these finally, he's gonna they're gonna sell like hotcakes. Uh, people use these filter systems all over the world, and because they work, um, they're cool. They fit very well. The fit and finish is awesome. Actually, on this one, it's like super awesome. And so you just have to be smarter than a monkey and get it hooked up right. That's my problem there. But once you get it dialed in and oiled, it'll uh, work very well. So yeah, the actuation's pretty, pretty nice. And he's tweaked that a few times in the process as well. Okay, so we kind of gave you the preview. I don't know if this is the world's first or not. I don't know how you'd ever prove a lot of things a lot of times. Um, seems to be a big deal with that. I'm just trying to help out a friend and get... I think that was the gist of it. You know, spent a lot of time talking to that guy. Like I said, he's a heck of a nice guy. And... I got to do some prototype testing, so then I was involved in the process a little bit. I was able to make a few suggestions, and here we have them. So there you go. All righty, well, oh yeah, I don't think I dug my wife a little hole in the ground over there with an excavator so she could have a pond. So that's what's going on with all the dirt wad over there because there are probably going to be some questions about that. All righty, so we got a up-close and personal view of the latest and greatest, soon to be released into the wilds, pre-production version here. I would, again, highly suggest that you go on the website if you want one of these when they first hit the deck and do a pre-order well, anyway, thanks for watching this session. Have a blessed day wherever you might be on God's green earth.